Wow, hey guys, it's Sunday. I'm feeling so much better. It's time. No, we're actually already a lot late. We're invited to like a Sunday breakfast birthday party. That's kind of what you do when you get older. It's not partying, <laughs> just having like a nice breakfast. I like, oh, you see, Venice is already calling. Okay, okay, let's, let's go. Just need my laptop, because there's also work today. And of course, also the camera. I mean, breakfast is nice and whatnot, but I prefer being here in the studio, even on a Sunday, just trying to squeeze out as much work as possible until the middle of the week, because then I'm heading over to ADE, DJing there at an event. If you want to know where and when, check out my Instagram. It's linked down below, first link. Today, I'm just here to try and catch up, make and finish as much music as possible to be able to showcase it to people, to play it, to just uh, give it to the right people and their labels and see what they think about it. So I really, really need to hurry up. We'll just do, instead of like watching me do a bunch of stuff that is not interesting, uh, Q&A. Very simple, you ask me questions, I'll answer them. First up, is music theory really important? Asking for a friend. Uh, yeah, it is. It's, I think, it's very important because you are a music producer or you want to be a music producer, music comes first. And playing the right notes, I think, is to a certain extent more important than playing the right sound. On the other hand, if you make like techno, like you could get away with just using like two or three notes. But even the knowledge of just being able to use these two or three notes and that these two or three notes make sense together, that's a rather music theory. So it's hard to answer. No music theory is impossible. You need to know at least some. I even made a very long and like detailed video about how to make music without music theory. And at the end, the entire video is teaching the very sneaky techniques and basics of music theory. For example, you can just play the black keys. They always fit together. And a bunch of other stuff if you're interested in that more detailed. I'll link that video down below. It's a very old one, but Still, everything in there is is valid. Best EDM record label in Berlin. Who? Get Physical is like legendary, but it's it's not the hippest at the moment. Inner Vision was really hype. I actually right now like just because it's so raw, like off recordings. I think by An Andrew Chrome, they're doing like super raw, basic, back to the roots techno, which I kind of I enjoy to a certain extent. So I like that for being kind of new retro in a in a way. Ultra Nova is asking most important advice you can give to any producer. Wow, people always ask me like like the the ultimate, the most like and like like the advice. Like I think people think they can skip this way certain steps in their career and the shortcut. But maybe the best advice is that there is nothing like that. If anyone promises you to teach you how to mix in five minutes or how to like advance in your music career easy and, and instant or whatever no 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 you have to work really hard and be really good the only shortcut there is out there is maybe if another artist that is huge is supporting you helping you giving you tips and carrying you forward but that only happens if they really believe in your music or sometimes if if they're really really good friends with you and they just want to do you a favor but even then, you'll still fail because the industry won't let you succeed if, you're, if your music just sucks and you're just being carried by someone else. So deliver, always deliver, do the best. How to get through the dip of music production, just make more music and, and force yourself sometimes a lot. Don't give up. If you easily give up, if you easily get frustrated, Music production is nothing for you. Official Aaron is saying, let's collaborate, I'll send you vocals. <laughs> That's not how to collaborate. If you want to collaborate with me, I usually only work like with singer-songwriters because producing I can do myself and other producers. I don't know, it's not my thing really, but um, write me an email. Instagram is the wrong place for any kind of business stuff. Melker is asking how to get gigs when you're under 18 years old. First of all, don't tell anyone your age, no one cares. If you find a club that likes your music, 
I don't think they will really ask you how old you are and no one at the entrance will check your ID if you're like 16, 17 and, and you, you should have been like 18 because you're the DJ. They assume you're old enough. So just go for it. I know like a friend of mine, he started with 14 and he had like, he got supported by a big DJ, but he actually made trash music because they were friends, uh, I think cousins. So he, he was playing in London with like 14 in front of two or 3,000 people. So his mom and dad had actually to, to be there as well. And uh, otherwise it was legally not possible. But he had maybe like one year of, of a career and now lost, entirely lost. So yeah, you have to deliver. You guess just asking if we allow to travel internationally back again, can I come to your studio for visiting? Uh, no, not for visiting. I'm here busy working. Andy's here busy working. We're trying to employ some more people but you can rent out the studio, like the, the B studio downstairs. If you need to record something, mix something, you can rent it. So uh, yeah, if you're interested in that, just hit us up with an email. Any plans to hire staff at your studio site now that COVID is nearly over? Yes, we're looking for interns and maybe also like a full-time job for someone, but that person needs to be qualified in, in a big way. I'm very picky. Down below in the description is like a link where you can apply if you're interested, but you should live close by enough to come by and actually work here. Eddie Weiss is asking, what sound effects can you recommend from the live setup on Ableton? I use Ableton for the live setup, yes, but I I started using the effects of Ableton and they're, they're good, but I'm, I'm like a little picky. And there are other ones just a hint better, so I'm using them actually. I don't I don't use any of the Ableton stuff. I just need to check and see if I can reduce the latency. Um, the next option would be using like a DSP powered sound card interface where the plugins are actually like being processed on it instead of at the computer. So uh, yeah, looking into that. License83 is asking why is Diva used on a lot of bass lines? Is it that good? Um, it's, yes, it's a, it's a good software synthesizer. I think the, the one thing that makes it special and why so many people use it and why there are so many presets for it is because it's like, it's an analog, like kind of modular synth, but you don't route everything. You just like switch out modules. So you can have the filter of the MOOC, the oscillators of, of the Jupiter and kind of mix that um, and get like new but still analog old sounding kind of sounds for for your songs so i wouldn't even say it's necessarily just for bass every kind of analog old school sound is doable with it so i think if you have um diva you got all of the analog synths in one and you can even combine them and if you have serum you have the same thing plus everything new wavetable kind of stuff and lfo wobbliness and effects like those two and that's it. You don't need anything else. There is there is not a single sound you can't get from these two, except for like very organic sample stuff. For that, you need contact or maybe Omnisphere. Will you ever DJ festivals or tour? Yeah, that's kind of the main goal again. Like I started as a DJ. I was touring for five years or six years heavily, like every weekend two gigs. Then I became more and more a music producer, stayed more and more at home, became more and more socially awkward. It just comes with like the, the profession of being like stuck in a studio 24 seven, trying to figure out stuff. I was uh, DJing before COVID, not a whole lot since COVID, not at all. Like um, in three days, it's my first DJ gig in the past two years again. It's a fairly small one, just in Amsterdam. Trying to get back to it, it's really hard. I talked to some club owners, the prizes for, for touring, like the, the, the fees for the DJs, they are around half. And uh, all of the big DJs are really interested in going back to DJing. So it's hard for someone kind of new, like at least the live setup that I'm developing is kind of new, to, to go through all of this again, but I'm, I'm working on it. It's like one of my main priorities. So let's see how it goes. If I fail, I fail, but at least I try. Last question by Pro Tetra: Is the Behringer Poly D a good synth? I don't know. I haven't tested any of them, but everyone I'm talking to is like, yeah, they're like legit, really good, very inexpensive. So uh, I was thinking of maybe getting some, maybe make a video about it. I think, uh, although maybe like a whole lot of people already did videos, I'd say just just 
buy it because it's so inexpensive. It's the best alternative and, and test it out for yourself. If it's bad, just send it back. Anyways, thanks a lot for all of the questions. I'm now really, really busy taking care of stuff. And tomorrow, another episode right here in the studio. An interesting one because I actually have a session with a singer-songwriter you might know, Robin Vane. We're, we're writing another song, so definitely tune in. They'll never catch up tonight.